And we are joined now by the chair of the Clinton campaign, John Podesta. John, thank you for joining us this morning. You saw our poll, a five-point lead this morning. Where do you see the race? Well, look, we feel uh, pretty good, George, but we're leaving nothing to chance. We're going to run through the tape. There's a lot of work to do uh, between now uh, and Tuesday when the polls close Tuesday night. Uh, so we're, we're, we're feeling uh, good. We're closing strong, but we're, we've got a tremendous amount of work to do. and We've got a million volunteers across the country who are doing that work for us. It seems like you got a lot of work to do in that state of Michigan. The Trump campaign pushing very, very hard there right now. They're going to Minnesota as well. They think they can break down your blue firewall in the upper Midwest. Well, look, we feel good about Minnesota. Uh, you know, he made that last minute change to abandon Wisconsin and go to Minnesota. We're not sure why he did that. But with respect to Michigan, you know, uh, as uh, Jonathan Carl pointed out, if we hold on to Nevada, that looks uh, strong in the early vote. Uh, Michigan votes uh, for the most part on Election Day. Uh, you know, we think we have uh, the, you know, this race uh, over. We're going to get over our 270 electoral votes. So we're going where, where the votes are. We're going to finish strong. We feel good about Michigan uh, and the rest of, the, of, the, of those states. But as uh, you noted, she was in Florida yesterday. Uh, we'll, uh, we, we feel like we've got uh, to do work, but we've got an edge in North Carolina. So there are a lot of paths to our victory, uh, but we, we want to hold on to the states that we think uh, ought to be in the Democratic column, and Michigan's one of them. You mentioned those states, Florida and Nevada, where you've seen that real surge in Latino voting over the early vote uh, period. And you saw Donald Trump out in Nevada last night saying the fact that they kept the polls open in, in Las Vegas on Friday night till 10 o'clock is a sign that the system is rigged. Yeah, you know, that's ridiculous. The people were in line and they got to, the people who were in line got to vote. Uh, and they, as normal, kept the votes, kept the polling place open so that they could vote. But, you know, with Donald Trump, if he's losing, everything's rigged. When he lost the Emmys, it was rigged. When he lost the primaries, uh, you know, those occasions when he lost the primaries in the, in the Republican uh, run up, uh, it was rigged. So if he's losing, it's rigged. Uh, but I think the American people see through that. They know. Uh, that this is going to be a fair election. Uh, Republican voting officials across the country have said that. Uh, Marco Rubio has said it. Paul Ryan has said it. Uh, it's going to be, you know, we've seen a surge of voting. You noted the uh, Latino surge uh, in uh, Florida, in Nevada. We're feeling very uh, good about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think we're going to keep uh, working to make sure that, that we're successful. Surge in Latinos, but African Americans have been lagging. Well, look, I think, you know, if you look at uh, Florida, for example, we've now uh, got more early vote amongst the African-American community uh, that, uh, than we had in, 20, in 2012. Uh, as voting sites expanded in North Carolina, the vote numbers went up. Uh, and, you know, uh, in 2012, they were, uh, the first African-American uh, president was running for re-election. We're going to try to match his numbers, and we're feeling like our organization can uh, keep working to help produce that. Uh, and uh, Hillary's going to be out uh, in Philadelphia tomorrow, uh, you know, across in, in, uh, with Le LeBron James today uh, in Ohio. Uh, we are very glad to be with Beyonce and Jay-Z. Uh, Donald Trump inexplicably attacked them last night, so I'm not sure that's smart for him. But, you know, we're going to do what we can uh, to make sure that people are hearing her message uh, that we're stronger together. We're going to build a country that's United, we're going to bring everybody to the table. We're going to make the right investments uh, to create a, an economy that's working for everyone, not just those at the top. That message has been somewhat drowned out in the last week since the announcement from James Kobe, the FBI, that he was looking at some more emails in that email investigation, also other leaks from the FBI. And Tim Kaine, uh, your vice presidential candidate, has now said that some in the FBI are, quote, actively working in support of Donald Trump. Do you believe that? Well, look, I'm, you know, we're all disturbed, uh, first of all, by the letter, which really broke precedent, uh, was over the advice of uh, the leaders in the Justice Department. Uh, you know, I'm not challenging uh, Mr. Comey's motivation, but I do think it was uh, unwarranted. It was a mistake. And I think that Republican and Democratic uh, former Justice Department officials have come out and questioned uh, the move that he made. Uh, and with respect to the leaks that have gone on throughout the week with Rudy Giuliani saying he's hearing leaks from the FBI, you know, I, I don't know what to make of it. I know that uh, Elijah Cummings, John Conyers, sent a letter to the Justice Department on Friday uh, asking the inspector general to investigate those leaks. But, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, our job is really just to, to get those uh, doors knocked. Uh, the 
uh, phone calls made to get our people out to the polls. We'll let uh, other people worry about that. The most important number I saw yesterday was uh, 7 million voter contacts. We did just on one day of 3 million face to face, 4 million on the phone. So that's what we're concerned about. You know, we'll let other people worry about the rest. Last week you said you wanted Mr. Comey to come out with more information. Do you still want that or do you think at this point it's better now for nothing to come out until after the election? Look, I think that we always said that this would was, you know, would end the same place it ended uh, last uh, June when uh, he said that uh, n no further action was warranted. It wasn't even a close case. There's nothing that uh, we believe that uh, in this uh, current round uh, that the FBI, the emails that he's looking at, that'll change that outcome. So if he's got more information, let, it, let him put it out. That's what we've said right from the beginning of this uh, uh, controversy and saga. It did seem to cost Hillary Clinton the chance to, what she, to use her words, go high in these final 10 days. You know, we're going to have a bitterly divided country no matter who wins on Tuesday. If Hillary Clinton wins, how is she going to be able to begin to heal those divisions? Look, that, you know, that's what she's out talking about. That's what she was saying in, in Florida, that she's going to be a president for everyone, for people who supported her, people who didn't support her. Uh, she's closing with a two-minute ad that is optimistic, that uh, talks about what she wants to do for the country. Uh, in contrast, uh, Donald Trump has a two-minute ad that looks like it's a, a kind of rip from a Batman movie. You know, uh, he kind of lives in a dark place, and, and uh, he's run this campaign on, di on division and bigotry. We're going to try to finish high, uh, talk about uh, what we can do to make sure every kid has a chance to succeed. That's what she's done her whole life. That's what she'll do as president. Uh, and, you know, she's gotten success with that, working with Republicans and Democrats uh, to do things like the children's health insurance program, uh, like making sure that first responders got health care uh, that they needed, that National Guards men and women got the health care they needed. She knows how to work across the aisle, and that's what she'll do as president. John Podesta, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thank you, George.